physiological changes which occur during valsalva maneuver is one of the techniques used in clinics for various uh, things for example assessment of autonomic functions then for the diagnosis of murmurs so what is this valsalva maneuver and what are the physiological changes which occur during valsalva maneuver valsalva maneuver is basically forced expiration forced expiration which is performed with closed glottis so air is basically not uh, moving outside of the lungs but due to forced expiration there is increase in the intrathoracic pressure so when we do forced expiration what happens that the person breathes into a manometer and he maintains this forced expiration for some time and while breathing in a manometer so that uh, during forced expiration he is able to maintain a certain pressure so that is an indication that he is continuing the valsalva maneuver now this is a technique used as a test but uh, physiologically these uh, valsalva maneuver kind of uh, physiological changes occur during various events for example straining uh, during defecation then during cupping and also lifting heavy weight so all these uh, physiological activities also cause valsalva maneuver like changes because uh, during these activities there is forced expiration which is happening so this valsalva maneuver basically has four phases that is first is the start of the maneuver okay so onset of a strain when he has just started the expiration then he will continue the valsalva maneuver for some time then stop of the maneuver that is release of the strain and after a stopping so we see the physiological changes that occur during these four phases and most important among these is during continuing of the valsalva maneuver and after stopping the valsalva maneuver so what happens that as the person starts the onset of the strain with the start of the strain there is increase in intrathoracic pressure and for very minimal time there is increase in blood pressure so this start of the strain represents the mechanical effect which the intrathoracic pressure is having on the blood pressure so basically adding on the intrathoracic pressure to the aortic pressure occurs so increase in blood pressure and again this mechanical effect happens during stopping of the procedures so at that particular moment with decrease in the intrathoracic pressure there is decrease in the blood pressure on the other hand when the person is continuing the procedure due to increase intrathoracic pressure actually there is decrease in the preload because increase in intrathoracic pressure collapses the veins and that is why decrease in preload occurs and uh, decrease in preload what will happen there will be decrease in cardiac output decrease in cardiac output there will be decrease in blood pressure and this decreased blood pressure is actually sensed by baroreceptors initiating the baroreflex causing increase in heart rate and increase in blood pressure on the other hand after stopping what happens the opposite events occur that is the intrathoracic pressure returns back to normal so there is increase in preload increase in cardiac output increase blood pressure and baroreflex brings about the opposite events so here you just remember that the start and the stop of the valsalva maneuver has mechanical effects okay and uh, where we are studying the physiology in the second phase right during the continuing of the procedure and after stopping of the procedure that is the fourth phase so let us see this effects on blood pressure and heart rate in a diagrammatic manner so here three graphs are shown first graph you see this is the time okay x axis is the time where this box is showing the this part is the start of the maneuver okay and here the maneuver is continuing and this is the stop of the maneuver and you see the intrathoracic pressure is represented on the y axis so with the start of the maneuver the intrathoracic pressure is increasing so what is the effect of uh, this on blood pressure and heart rate so here i have already marked the 1 2 3 4 that is the phases of the valsalva maneuver so this is the first phase start second 
right third phase and after this continues the fourth phase accordingly i have also marked these in the bp graph so again x axis represents the time okay so here it is the maneuver is started at around 10 seconds so this represents the baseline right so we will see blood pressure and heart rate graph with each phase of the valsalva maneuver so let us see first phase so here when the maneuver is starting what we see due to the mechanical effect there is increase in blood pressure this top red line shows the systolic blood pressure and this bottom red line shows the diastolic blood pressure so both are rising during the start of the maneuver and as blood pressure rises baroreflex kicks in right so we see decrease in the heart rate only for very small time we are not interested in this mechanical effect what we are interested in the physiological effects so what is happening in phase 2 you see that as the intrathoracic pressure is maintained because of decreased uh, preload blood pressure is decreasing right so both systolic and diastolic blood pressure are falling and due to baroreflex because of the fall in bp baroreceptors are stimulated less there is activation of the sympathetic system, inhibition of the parasympathetic system and heart rate actually increases. So this portion is due to baroreflex. Then third phase, again the mechanical effect, what will happen? You see that as the intrathoracic pressure falls, there is little bit fall in blood pressure. Here little bit rise you are seeing because due to baroreflex, the BP starts correcting, right? And with the stoppage of the Valsalva maneuver, BP falls due to the mechanical effect. Then fourth part. Fourth part is that after stoppage, what will happen? There will be increase in preload. Increased preload will cause increase in the cardiac output and increase in the blood pressure. So here again what you are seeing is the manifestation of the physiological changes which are occurring. And this increased BP is detected by the baroreceptors which in turn cause decrease in the heart rate. So this is Valsalva maneuver and the physiological changes which occur during Valsalva maneuver. Now for autonomic function testing, we calculate a Valsalva ratio. What is that? That is the ratio between longest RR interval and the shortest RR interval. Now this longest RR interval will occur when the heart rate decreases because the intermediate interval is basically increasing and that is why the heart rate is decreasing and this shortest RR interval will occur when there is increased heart rate. So tell me in which phases are we going to take this longest RR interval and shortest RR interval when are they going to occur? You see heart rate decrease is occurring in the fourth phase and heart rate increase is occurring in the second phase. So longest error interval in fourth phase we take and shortest error interval in the second phase we take and that ratio is taken as Valsalva ratio and normally this ratio is less than 1.21. So this ratio is an indicator of parasympathetic activity. Why parasympathetic activity and not sympathetic activity? See whenever in autonomic function test we are talking about heart rate then we are referring to parasympathetic changes. Why? Sympathetic system also causes changes in heart rate? True. But the effect of parasympathetic system on heart rate is extremely fast. It is the beat to beat changes which occur in heart rate that is due to parasympathetic activity. On the other hand, sympathetic system, the changes occur little late. Well, this is because of the mechanism of action. Parasympathetic action happens directly via the ion channels. It causes the opening of the ion channels and there is instant uh, changes in the heart rate. However, sympathetic system, the norepinephrine which is released acts via metabotropic receptors which take little time to act. So in autonomic function testing, Valsalva maneuver when we are looking at, we are basically looking at the parasympathetic activity. Fine. With this, now let us move on to the applications of the Valsalva maneuver. So what are its application? As I told you, one is assessment of the autonomic function test. So that is for parasympathetic activity. And if there is autonomic abnormality, dysautonomia, that is reflected in the Valsalva ratio. Valsalva ratio is going to increase. 
then it is also used for heart failure assessment so the heart rate changes uh, which we are talking that don't occur in case of heart failure then it is also used for termination of certain arrhythmias especially paroxysma supraventricular tachycardia because what we are seeing that in phase 4 there is increase in parasympathetic activity and this increase parasympathetic activity not only reduces the heart rate but it also reduces the conduction of the impulse so one of the application of valsalva maneuver is psvt termination and then there are certain murmurs which can be exaggerated or decreased during the valsalva maneuver so these are the various applications of the valsalva maneuver Thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you